My name is Robert Haidt, and I am the President and CEO of the Glendale Chamber of Commerce. And I am pleased to see, yet again, another great group of it in attendance this evening for this year's State of the City Annual Dinner. Ordinarily, you go to an event and you acknowledge all of our elected officials and our dignitaries in the room. And I just want to take a moment and do something a little bit different. Um, we at the Glendale Chamber are a member-based organization. And so what I'd like to do is, as a chamber member, if you're sitting in the audience, if you'll please stand and allow us to recognize you first as a Glendale Chamber of Commerce member. So if you'll please stand and join me in a round of applause. <laughs> I see a few of you that didn't stand, but that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll get you later. So with that, the Glendale Chamber of Commerce is proud to partner with the City of Glendale on tonight's State of the City. This evening we have a number of elected officials and key city representatives and other special guests in attendance that I'd like to acknowledge. First and foremost, our very own Mayor Jerry Wires and his lovely wife Sandy. <laughs> Vice Mayor Ian Hugh joined by his lovely wife Sharon. Also to my left, Council Member Lauren Tomachoff. <laughs> Gary Sherwood, joined by his lovely wife, Patrice. <laughs> Back to my left is Council Member Bart Turner. <laughs> Just over here, kind of diagonal to where I'm standing, is Council Member Sammy Chavera. Thank you. And last but not least, our council member, Jimmy Aldama and his lovely wife, Monica. We hope that you have enjoyed the great conversation and networking here this evening and the wonderful meal. We want to once again thank Bill Hitu and Lynn Robbins of the Renaissance and their teams for providing us such great service this evening. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Last year, I had the distinct honor to introduce our mayor, and I, once again this year, have that great honor um, to introduce Glendale Mayor Jerry Wires. Mayor Wires is a husband, grandfather, and a devoted public servant. He has spent his adult life owning and operating successful businesses, volunteering with nonprofit organizations, and servicing the community through many acts of public service. He and his lovely wife, Sandy, have been married for 33 years and lived in Arizona since 1966. 33 is a great number. <clears throat> Together they have one beautiful daughter and one grandson. Probably getting a little ornery now. He was with us last year, so I know we didn't have him with us this year. Um, something about the mayor that many of you may know, um, the mayor battled uh, cancer as a young man. And uh, Mayor Wires, um, it, that gave him a, a unique outlook on life that is focused on service, creative problem solving, and enjoying life to the fullest. And I can tell you over the last year, getting to work and know the mayor, he likes to have fun. So uh, he definitely lives to the fullest in that way when he shows up at a ribbon cutting on his uh, motorcycle and uh, does some other fun things for us, keeps us on our toes. Uh, it's with these values that he sought to help his community by serving us as Mayor of Glendale. Mayor Wires has been very active in his last two years as mayor. Hopefully you saw during dinner many of the slides that came through showing all the things that he's done. He has worked very hard to attract new businesses to our city and help grow those that are already here. Mayor Wires has played a key role in the city obtaining more than a million dollars in grants for public safety and nonprofit groups. These successes combined with the F-35 mission at Luke Air Force Base will be critical as the rest of the council continue their work with the mayor to improve our great city. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mayor Jerry Wires. Thanks. Hey, yeah, oh, you don't say. Really? No, you don't say. No, Jerry. you don't say. No, it can't be. You don't say. Harry. Don't say. Harry. Wow. I can't believe that. You don't say. Harry. Oh. 
Harry. Oh, I, hey, I gotta get going. All right. We're starting here. Oh, okay. Who was that? He didn't say. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Harry. Well, good evening. I'd like to welcome and thank all of you who have uh, taken the time to be here tonight. It is a pleasure to see you here at the beautiful Renaissance Glendale Hotel and Spa. And I thank the Glendale Chamber of Commerce, their board of directors, and its president, Robert Height. Since they've allowed me to make my annual State of the Speech address at this event, as I begin, I would like to recognize some important folks in attendance. And putting my priorities in order, first, my bride, Sandy, my wife of 33 years. Sandy, I love you. <laughs> Next, I would like to recognize our city council members who have joined us tonight. And I was going to announce their names, but I don't need to because Robert did that for me earlier. But uh, thank all of you for being here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Representing G General Scott Ployce and Luke Air Force Base is Colonel Colonel, Colonel Jeremy Sloan. Welcome, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Patty White is with us tonight. She is the president and CEO of Dignity Health and a fellow of the American College of Healthcare Executives. Dignity chose Glendale for the location of its new Westgate Medical Center. Patty, welcome. <laughs> welcome. And also with us is Don Carden. Don's the CEO of Carden Development Group. His team is heading up the Asperit Joy Project in North Glendale. Uh, he is not joined, unfortunately, with, uh, with us tonight. Uh, Steve Backman, uh, who is the president, or is the president of Carden Development Group, wasn't able to make it tonight. So, uh, Don, welcome. I take uh, great pride in this next gentleman, Taylor Field. Uh, Taylor, stand up for me if you would. Taylor Field joins us as president of the Mayor's Youth Advisory Commission, also known as MIAC. Taylor, welcome. <laughs> a good friend of mine and uh, uh, someone that keeps me out of trouble frequently, Pastor Walt Kellestead from Community Church of Joy, joins us along with his wife, Mary. Welcome. Welcome. I'm also very pleased to introduce tonight uh, Mr. Dick Bowers, who has come on board as our acting city manager. Dick, welcome. <laughs> now, I've got another person whom I'd like to give special mention. In September of this past year, several families living in southwest Glendale were hit with an unprecedented flooding. Mel Straw, owner of Straw Custom Homes, took immediate action to come to the aid of his neighbors. In an email written to Councilmember Chavita on September 14th, Glendale Fire Captain Mark Mann described Mel's activities like this. He obtained water pumps the morning of the flooding, and he used his crews to start the process of pumping water from the basin. He did this out of his own pocket. Yesterday, he went to Home Depot and rented floor and carpet fans for the homeowners so they could start the drying process. And today he showed up with one of his construction crews to start cutting drywall from the houses affected. Because there were no rental fans available, he went back then to Home Depot and purchased six additional fans at a cost of over $900 to himself. When one of the homeowners asked what they owed him so far, he replied, there's no charge. When we asked him for further comment about Mel's activities, Captain Mann added, in addition, he also assisted with help move two large homes and put their belongings into storage units. He did this with his truck and trailer and provided a large portion of labor both through workers, family, and friends. For weeks, he did what he could for them. At lunch, you guessed it, he would either order pizzas or have subs delivered to keep volunteers fed. And then when threatening weather was again coming in, and the city was short on sandbags, he called a local gravel company and had 25 tons of sand delivered, and then went and purchased bags to fill, all with his own money. He then organized a group of neighbors to fill and distribute the bags to the neighbor doorways to prevent additional flooding. Every time I turned around, he was paying for something or donating labor to the cause. 
Mel, would you please come up here? Join me. What, uh, Mel, what I've got for you is, uh, can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, what I've got for Mel tonight, and, and quite honestly, I, his, his bride probably should be here, but uh, is a, a plaque that says Mayor's Citizen of the Year 2015, presented to Mel Stroll in recognition of your dedication and service to our community. Thank you so much. So, Turn, turn. Are you good? Okay, and hold on, I got one more thing for you. And then also, most of you that know me know that uh, I, I like challenge coins. I love what the military uh, has done with the challenge coins. And the military uh, took the idea, and when somebody does something outstanding, something over and above the Call of Duty than the military, rather than give them promotions or raises or, or just a pat on the back, they, they call them up in front of the troops and they give them a special award. This is a challenge coin uh, that literally uh, is the city of Glendale and it's a key to the city, it's a coin. So, uh, welcome. Thank you so, so very, very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would uh, join me. Thank you very much. When I think about what Mel did, this is the conclusion that I've come to. Mel is probably all embarrassed that we're singling him out like he's exceptional. But the point is that we want to create the kind of environment where fellowship like this can be the norm. It is because he has a sense of belonging and pride in his community that he wanted to help out. And it's because he's a successful businessman that he was able to help out. I just want to thank Mel for being one of the first to help show us the way. Thanks again, Mel. The people that I've chosen to recognize this year are important to me because they represent our sense of community and our potential for growth. After a little while, I'll show you a video so you can understand the significance of what these people represent. And as all, all of you should be aware, Glendale has had some serious economic challenges to overcome. It is worth realizing the challenges of this nature cannot be solved in the halls of government alone. Both the purpose and the means of having a more vibrant economy is to build a more vibrant community. The people I've recognized here tonight are part of that growth towards a more vibrant community. And they represent many others in the community who care and who help move Glendale ahead. Because nearly half of Glendale's general fund revenues come from sales tax, our city government must do its part to take care of the local economy. In doing so, we'll ensure that we provide our taxpayers the services they deserve. What you must realize is the reason there is a winning approach for this. A vibrant economy does more than put needed dollars in the revenue stream of government. It puts opportunity within the reach of citizens of the community to which that economy belongs. The economic growth and opportunity for that community that comes with it is within Glendale's reach. And I want you to see the sense of opportunity as I show you this video of the highlights of business projects occurring within our city limits. So in order to do that, please direct your attention to one of the two screens. This past fall at 99th Avenue and Bethany Home Road, American Furniture Warehouse opened their 600,000 square foot store. Tanger Outlets will soon complete the addition of 85,000 square feet of new retail space. St. Joseph's Westgate Medical Center opened in May of 2014. Due to higher than anticipated demand, plans have already been submitted for an additional 62,000 square feet of medical office building. One, two, three, go. 
A Spirit Joy development broke ground last February. This development will create 1,600 temporary construction jobs, and upon completion, it'll create 1,700 permanent jobs for our community. Midwestern University opened Arizona's first veterinary school this past fall. In addition, Midwestern University has been very busy planning and now has added an additional 1 million plus square feet of office, classroom, parking, and residential units to their ever-expanding campus. Progressive Leasing, a new company in Glendale, announced in late 2014 they were locating in 53,000 square feet of office space in Talavi Corporate Center. And they'll employ as many as 500 folks by the end of the year, having already hired 125 so far this year. Ironwood Cancer and Research Center, also located in Talavi, is Ironwood's first facility in the West Valley. The state-of-the-art cancer and research center provides both radiation and chemotherapy treatments and an array of other personal services in their 25,000 square foot building. Zanhero Falls was purchased in 2014 by Select Healthcare Solutions. The new owner of the previously vacant property is planning a medical campus to include Palo Verde Oncology Center and several new medical office buildings as well. New West Oil, this valued small business decided to expand from Phoenix and is renovating a nearly 10,000 square foot building on Tom Murray Avenue, bringing jobs and much appreciated new revenue to our city. Canyon State Bus Sales, another company that decided to move from Phoenix to Glendale and is building a new 27,000 square foot headquarters and service center on Claremont Avenue will also bring added sales tax revenues to the city. At 83rd Avenue and Union Hills, construction will soon begin on Glendale's first new office building, a structure of 43,000 square feet. And if that's not enough, Dave and Busters have announced they will soon begin construction of a 40,000 square foot location near the AMC theaters at Westgate. I see these business owners as public servants with a stake in the community, just like myself. They bring us jobs, they bring us tax revenue, and their success is our success. To them I say, welcome to Glendale. To Glendale I say, welcome to the next chapter of our history. I am pleased to begin this together. Of course, we also have to play while we work. Henry Ford said, no towns were so poor as those of England, where the people from the children up worked 15 and 16 hours a day. They were poor because they overworked people soon wore out. They earned less and less, and they could buy less and less. In other words, all play, all, all work and no play makes for pretty dull existence. And for Ford, and Ford was smart enough to understand that a dull existence was not a productive one. He was also sharp enough to point out there is a profound difference between leisure and idleness. We are certainly becoming known as a leisure destination. You can see this when I tell you that Glendale Convention and Visitors Bureau responded to more than 10,000 requests for information about this city in the West Valley during this past January. Famed NBC reporter Bob Costas stated before the Super Bowl that Glendale um, is America's sports capital. How cool is that? While we develop ourselves as a destination for leisure, Glendale certainly has not been idle. In a space of just over a month, we hosted the Fiesta Bowl, the Pro Bowl, and the Super Bowl. And by hosting these events, we did far more than entertain ourselves and others. We challenged ourselves to become a more capable community. An event like the Super Bowl brings us more than dollars. It brings us relationships and sharpens our skills. We can build the value of our community at the same time that we provide the value of leisure to the nation. And this becomes apparent when you consider that our police and firefighters don't just show up when we need to host a big event. In his email praising Mr. Strahl, Fire Captain Mann characterized Glendale's public safety officials like this. It is the men and women of public safety who every day show up knowing in advance that doing their job will not get it done. They must do whatever is required and that almost always involves doing more than their job. That's what makes us proud and that's what makes us successful, the captain wrote. These are the folks who are on the streets every day of the year protecting our lives and the things we hold dear. Then we decide to challenge ourselves and put on a, a national caliber event, 
Our city's finest go through a rigorous process to become prepared. And this means that they are now even better as what they do for us and therefore that much more valuable to us the rest of the year. You can understand that hosting a major event causes our public safety officials to form a team better equipped to serve their community. When you consider this information, the Super Bowl is the only event that receives National Department of Homeland Security special event assessment rating of number one. And there's only one other type of event that receives a higher rating than that, and that'd be a presidential visit. The Super Bowl required that more than 40 different law enforcement and public safety agencies develop the skills to coordinate together cohesively. The city was responsible to provide governmental services to the NFL that included both public safety and inspection services. We also worked hand in hand with the NFL in the transportation planning. There is nothing to challenge and build teamwork among public safety officials like an event of this magnitude can. Hosting these events also trains government to run a tighter ship and causes us to build a deeper awareness of Glendale's business community. The truth of this makes itself known in the following facts and figures. Throughout planning for the big game, staff worked diligently to establish partnerships and negotiate terms for city obligations. This enabled them to save us at least $220,000. In addition, they were able to generate over $60,000 for us in new revenue. City officials had to come together to provide project management, plan review, inspection, and liquor licensing services for all the events and activities that took place in the area. On Super Bowl Sunday, it's estimated that over 100,000 fans and visitors attended festivities in Glendale Sports and Entertainment District. And you can see the proof that Glendale went above and beyond to strengthen its relationship with its local business community. The NFL and the NFL partners in the fact that at the end of the day, we delivered an exceptional event. The demands placed on us when we host a major event are also causing us to develop a more cohesive relationship with the rest of the state as evidenced in the following. As I mentioned last year, other states that compete with us for these type of events have a model whereby host cities can receive financial assistance for public safety. And the need to generate something similar here in Arizona is causing us to continuously interact more closely with our legislature with the business community across the state and with the tourism industry. Last year, we put forward a bill that failed to pass by only a few votes on the last day of the legislative session. This year, we're able to renew the effort and build our ties to the rest of the state of Arizona. We are encouraged because we have been invited to work with a coalition that includes the tourism industry, businesses, the Arizona Sports and Tourism Authority, and others. And this coalition will jointly pursue a larger package of long-term sustainable funding. This may provide encouragement to attract major events and include the ability to provide priority funding for public safety costs incurred by that host city. Under the council's direction, this session will be working with the broad coalition to tackle this funding issue. We are not only bringing in revenue, we are building the teamwork to effectively utilize revenue and grow harmoniously as a community. It is a challenge as we present to ourselves when we take on a, an event of national importance that enables us to do this. And as I consider Glendale's future, I ask myself, how many ways can we infuse more well-being into our daily existence? This year we had fun, not only at the national level, we also discovered we can have fun at the level of our hometown grassroots. And we discovered how we can turn that fund into dollars that benefits our friends and our neighbors. Notice the growing strength of our community in the following events. The mayor's big dog run was a motorcycle ride that helped fund the veterans spirit of service scholarship at Glendale Community College. Glendale has the highest number of veterans in any city in the valley. And this scholarship program is one way of letting the men and women of our armed services know we welcome you home with open arms. Another event that benefited our veteran community was Stand Up for Veterans. We held a teddy bear toss at the local Coyotes game. 
Visitors to the game donated stuffed animals to first responders that will be used to help children in crisis. I initiated an ice bucket challenge among a group of Arizona mayors. The recipient of an ice bucket challenge agrees to dump a bucket of ice water over their head. Or forfeit the challenge by making a charitable donation to ALS research. The hometown Christmas parade celebrated the true reason for the season and benefited Hope for Hunger Food Bank. Now, if you would, look again at the screens uh, to see what fun we actually had. Today we're out at uh, Glendale Community College. It's uh, April 19th and uh, we've got a large motorcycle event that I'm doing. It's called the Mayor's Big Dog Run. As you can hear behind me, the motorcycle's coming in. The whole event is, is designed and planned to uh, uh, raise money for a scholarship fund here at Glendale Community College to help our veterans. Anybody that ever served this country possibly used up their GI benefits. Uh, we want to raise money, so if they want to further their education, why wouldn't we do this? Here's the cool part about it for me. I get to ride in this event. We're going to go out to Luke Air Force Base, ride down the runway, and uh, wind through the West Valley. We have a lot of other cities partnered with this that will have their police departments and their fire departments helping out. Uh, so nobody has a huge expense in it. Everybody's sharing a little bit. But, uh, you know, bottom line, we get to do something fun. I get to promote the city, regionalism with all the other West Valley cities. And uh, we'll finish up riding through the, uh, down the ramp and inside of the Phoenix University Stadium, do a lap around the inside, and, and then uh, stop at Westgate and have barbecue. The idea of a stand-up is to be able to work with the veterans and their, their families before problems become insurmountable. Mayor Wires came up with uh, with this idea. Yeah, I'm a, a Robert Thomas Vietnam vet. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for your service. We have uh, 55 agencies that are here supporting this event. A lot of veterans are here. A lot of uh, service providers outside of uh, the VA are here. You have jobs here. Everything that a veteran would need is right here. It's almost like a one-stop shop. Take it all off, all the way down. to a home that maybe has caught fire or an accident, something that, that's, that's been traumatic towards a child, the police and fire will have a, an animal, a teddy bear, that they'll be able to give to that child to kind of help settle them down a little bit. You know, uh, it, it's pretty traumatic when a child's upset, and on top of that, your first responders, most all of them have children themselves, and so they're trying to deal with that child and their personal feelings at the same time, trying to do their job. So. Uh, it's, a, it's a marvelous event, a lot of neat things happening in here, and, uh, and, and, and it's one more thing that shows uh, Glendale as far as uh, uh, to other cities, uh, you know, we, we got it together, you know, we're, uh, we're supporting our citizens, we're supporting our public safety. As an officer, uh, somebody who will benefit from this event and fellow officers will benefit from this event, I'd like to thank the families and people who showed up today to contribute and donate and um, provide us with teddy bears to um, help kids to forget about something terrible that might have happened to them. Linda Cavanaugh, Mayor of Fountain Hill. I'm at the wrong Sharon room. Walcott, Mayor of Surprise. Ken Wise, City of Avondale. Mark Mitchell, Mayor of Tempe. Mayor Wires challenged every mayor across the uh, state to participate in, in the Ice Bucket Challenge, uh, and we all accepted that challenge. Thank you for Mayor Wires for taking the lead on it. Everyone here knows that ALS is a terrible, terrible disease, and taking a little ice on our head is the least we could do uh, to help people suffering and families suffering that terrible disease. I'm calling out the Speaker of the House, Andy Tobin. That's my challenge. All right, all right let's do it. All right. Come on. What a great day to have a parade. And a lot of pumped up people, a lot of excited people. And you know, the beneficiary of this parade, the money that's raised over uh, actual costs is going to Hope for Hunger Food Bank, a local food bank. And they're struggling, they're having a tough time, so. 
We want to make sure that as we celebrate the reason for the season, Christmas, at the same time we can help the very people that need the help the most. Thank you. The Mayor's Big Dog Run raised $6,000 for Veteran Spirit of Service Scholarship. The Teddy Bear Toss stocked our first responder supplies of plush animals. The Ice Bucket Challenge built a great camaraderie amongst myself and my fellow mayors in the name of a good cause. The Hometown Christmas Parade again raised an, an additional $10,000 for Hope for Hunger Food Bank. I guess we proved that leisure can work for us. Thanks, Mr. Ford. We have not only been able to stabilize Glendale finances, but we've also been able to stabilize the community within the community. And by that I mean a system of people that are responsible for the city's smooth operation. With a stable community under us, we can shine in the eyes of the entire nation. And the skills we develop when we step into the national spotlight are the very skills that help us make ourselves a tighter, stronger community with a greater sense of purpose every day of the year. I want to give everyone thanks to everyone for helps keep the city running from our public safety officials to my counterparts in the government at our city council and everyone in between. Without both stable infrastructure and a vision for the future, we could not achieve triumphs like success successfully hosting the Super Bowl. And finally, as I look forward to another year, it is my desire that Glendale continue to see the city's problem solved and become aware of an increasing opportunity available to all of our citizens. I'm proud to live in Glendale. I'm proud to work together with all of you. And I am so proud and privileged to be your mayor of this wonderful community. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Before I uh, turn uh, the time back over to Robert, uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun in uh, another example of how our community business leaders step up. Serretas has donated some uh, special one-of-a-kind chocolates, uh, and the funds raised tonight will go towards the Mayor's Youth Advisory Commission, or MIAC, which is uh, all of these young folks to my left. Now, there's only 50 boxes of chocolate, which, uh, don't laugh, and you will, uh, Mr. Shredda calls them the Mayor's Road Apples. Uh, these treats are fantastic. He does not make them in his factory. Uh, he makes them specifically for this only. I can guarantee you that you will love them. Uh, 20 bucks a box. There's nine pieces per box. They will go very fast, so please, please raise your hand when one of the MIAC students will deliver your chocolates. Now, our MIAC students, before you guys take off, hold on a minute. Before, uh, uh, before you take off, our MIAC students represent some of Glendale's best and brightest teens. In MIAC, they get involved in city government and provide hundreds of hours of community service. They have painted homes. They've helped former military service members at Stand Up for Veterans. They've assisted the new council installation. They've helped with Hometown Christmas Parade, planted trees and picked fruit at Swirl Ranch Park, and participated in many other service projects that help Glendale residents. They also raise funds for the annual Angel Tree Project to help provide gifts to families in need. Now they raise funds, most, most of their funds they raise are during the chocolate affair. However, as many of you may recall, the weather restricted their fundraising at the chocolate affair down to just one day this year. So please consider helping MIAC by purchasing some of the wonderful custom chocolates. I'd like to thank all of, all of you again for your support of the Glendale's Mayor and Youth Advisory Council. We have got a special guest that uh, was supposed to be here, and I haven't seen him. He was supposed to come out and uh, uh, actually help the Mayak kids. I, I, don't, I don't know where he's at, but... Okay. Well, he's around here somewhere. Oh, there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Haller. <laughs> How are you? Very good. You going to help him? I understood all that. 
Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd hold your hands up real high, $20 bill, the kids are going to come through. Howler's going to help sell the candy. So go out there and work it, Howler. Okay, watch your step. Okay, we've only got 50 boxes, so you don't want to be the one person that don't have a box. Great, here you go. Here you go. Hold your hands up real high. Okay, I've got several people over here, students. How many boxes we got left? Oh, hey, here we go. One, one more. Okay, who wants them? Okay, you don't have to limit yourself to $20 either. Mm. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, I got some more folks over here. If you got any boxes left, bring them over. You got any boxes left over here? Over here, Howler. Over here. Over here. Other over here. <laughs> one, one man here, one man there, man there. We have any more chocolates? Right over here. <laughs> All right. You have any more chocolates over there? Are you sold out? Sold out. Okay, thank you folks very much. Thank you so much for helping the MIAC students. Holler, thank you, my friend. Each and every day that I'm here, I'm humbled a little bit more um, by the community that we have. Uh, Glendale is the anchor city here in the West Valley, and there certainly is a heart. And one thing was evident by the mayor's uh, presentation this evening. Um, he certainly has a heart of gold, and I will tell you, every time I'm out there with him representing the community, he's representing the city um, and, and all of us, um, each time someone comes up to him and asks a question and says, hey, I, do you know, or how do I, um, never, ever have I ever seen him hesitate. He always, 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 stops, give me, a, give me a second here, let me think, Robert, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> poor Thomas, but I'll tell you, you know, he, he always um, has an ear to lend, and, and it's evident in those with, it, with his charitable giving and, and his giving back here in Glendale with all the events he does for Glendale, so thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, one more time. <laughs> At this time, I have a uh, a distinct honor to introduce our 2014 Chairman of the Board, Dave Mitchell of Ideal Insurance. Um, Dave, uh, many of you may know or not know, he actually led the search committee for why I'm here. So I uh, owe a lot to this gentleman for um, helping to have me here. So please help me welcome Dave Mitchell, the 2014 Chairman of the Board. Thank you, Mayor. I've been coming to these for a long period of time, but I believe this was the very best that I've ever seen. We do appreciate it. Once again, thank you to the sounds of the Southwest Singers under the direction of Matt Deller and the ASU Jazz Band who played prior to our uh, meeting tonight, and uh, they've just added so much. In 2004, I was honored to be the chair of the Glendale Chamber of Commerce, then again to be honored in 2014. I feel double blessed to have had this opportunity. As past chair of the Glendale Chamber, the best words that quickly come to mind is, thank you, thank you, thank you. And wow, what an incredible year. Before I get started on the accomplishments of the chamber, please allow me to say thank you to some very special people. Because without their time, their effort, and enthusiasm, none of this would have been possible. You know, success starts at the top. That's where leadership begins. 
Most of you know our president of the chamber, Robert Height, who just spoke, you know, I'm on a personal basis. When I spoke to you last year as a chamber, incoming chair, I laid out high milestones that I wanted to see accomplished this, next, this year. In Robert's first year as president and CEO, his leadership paved the way to exceed our board's expectations. As a result of his leadership, Robert was offered, and I'm very pleased to announce, just signed a five-year contract. Our thanks are to Robert and the Chamber team. Please stand and be recognized as I call out your name, and I'd ask that you'd hold your applause until I've called everyone. Robert Height, CEO and President. Monica Nyland, Director of Administration. Gregory Walsh, Director of Marketing and Communication, and the ASU interns who we gave on-the-job training to, Jordan Mariner, and Rebecca Lanavasso. Kerry Kaufman, Director of Investor Relations, and Harry Shapiro, also Director of Investor Relations. We want to say thank you also to Jackie Payton, who volunteered her time this last year, and I said volunteered her time throughout this year. Thank you all very much. Also, I want to say a special thank you to our all-volunteer board who have given so much this last year. These individuals have given their time, their effort, and their wisdom because they believe in our chamber. They will all be formally acknowledged by our 2015 chair, Bobby Magdaleno, in a few moments. We also want to say thank you to our mayor and the city council who have attended several of our functions and made themselves accessible to our members. What a difference you've made for us. Thank you. You know, whenever time is given to an organization, time is sacrificed in another. I would be remiss if I did not say a personal thank you to a couple of people in my life who have supported me this last year. First, the love of my life, who has not only been extremely supportive of me, but has also attended, and several of you have got to know her very well, Patricia Turner. Last year, I stated at the State of the City, change in an organization is inevitable, but the change must be effective to have a positive outcome. Chambers of Commerce, like every other organization, have to change to remain relevant and viable. I went on to state the Glendale Chambers of Commerce was no exception. It was time to ditch the status quo and stop being the chamber of yesterday. We set out as a chamber to accomplish four objectives. Strengthen networking. For those of you who attended our functions, you know that this was accomplished. Our attendance has been fantastic this last year and we are continuing to improve. Balance our budget and strengthen our financial condition. I stated last year that we would have a finance committee. The chamber went from the red to the black this last year. <laughs> Become involved with government affairs. A committee was organized, led by Jeff Blake, then as a chamber, we became involved as a member-based organization in government affairs, like we've never done that before. It's just been an incredible year, this. Over 85% of our members at the Glendale Chamber are classified as small business. These businesses sometimes have a tough time speaking as one business. But collectively, the Glendale Chamber speaks on behalf of over 700 businesses who belong to our Glendale Chamber of Commerce. We are now advocating for our members when necessary, and we take positions as a voice for the business community. Don't be surprised to see us start to endorse candidates within a very short period of time to those 
who are friendly to the business community. Number four, the chamber made it a primary objective to increase membership. A membership committee was formed and Harry and Carrie were busy throughout this whole year bringing in new members. I'm happy to report to you the Glendale Chamber added 204 new businesses this last year. On behalf of the Glendale Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and our more than 700 members, thank you for attending tonight and for your engagement with the Chamber. Mayor Wires, thank you for your remarks. You highlighted many reasons why I am a proud Glendale resident and enjoy the fact that ASU's West Campus borders Glendale and now ASU Thunderbird is in Glendale. We appreciate your commitment to the Chamber and the business community. Glendale Council members, your engagement with the Chamber is very much appreciated. We are honored to work with you as partners. And other city colleagues, thank you for all that you do as we work together to build success and pride for our businesses. Our job at the Glendale Chamber of Commerce is focused on providing leadership that promotes a strong local economy. We aim to provide value to our members, be highly engaged in the community, and serve as an advocate for business. As the voice of commerce, we provide programs and services to improve the economic environment for our members. This year, some of our plans include a refinement of the strategic plan, an evaluation of current programs and discussions about additional offerings needed for the benefit of our members' ability to strengthen and grow their business. And to do all of that, I am very excited to introduce your 2015 Chamber Board of Directors. Leading us off, alphabetical order, Steve Adams. Oh. Alpha Graphics. And yeah, we may want to hold our applause. We have a few of us. And I think I'm between you and the door tonight. So uh, Steve's favorite place is Coronado Island and calls that home as much as possible. He follows all Valley sports teams and works the Cubs spring training games. You may also find him walking, reading, or listening to country music. Welcome, Steve. Over here. Over here. <laughs> nice. Jeff Blake, Intentional Achievements. How many of you know that Jeff enjoys pistol, rifle, and shotgun shooting at the range? Is an avid photographer and received varsity letters in tennis in high school and college. His bucket list includes being a bass fisherman on the pro bass circuit and being a jazz music and being a jazz music DJ playing music from his own collection. Thanks, Jeff. Eva Bowles, SRP. Her favorites include chocolate ice cream and the following quote, let us be grateful to the people who make us happy. They are the charming gardeners who make our souls blossom. Marcel Proust. Ariana Dearman, Judici, Wells Fargo. She went from being a demon at Greenway High School to a devil at Arizona State. She has traveled to 16 countries and loves skydiving, bungee jumping, parasailing, zip lining, any thrilling, dangerous activity, and she is there. Jean Higginbotham, Humana. Don't let her sweetness fool you. If you see her at a Coyotes hockey game, there's a whole different side that comes out while cheering on her favorite hockey team along with her family. Slava Ibragimov, First Bank. Slava enjoys spending time with his wife, Angela, and four-month-old son, Ben. Wow, four months. Congratulations, Slava and Angela. Don Johnson, Arizona State Credit Union. Don's favorites include Daytona Beach, NASCAR, and dancing with her husband, Earl, of almost 29 years. Wayne Lawson, Sinorama on 51st Avenue. Opened his business a few days ahead of 9-11. The very first check that he wrote was for the chamber membership, and he attended his first chamber meeting on the morning of September 11th. 
Bobby Magdaleno, that would be me at ASU. You won't find me skydiving, bungee jumping, or shooting a rifle at the range. However, you may see me match Gene's Coyote's excitement at an ASU Sun Devil football game. Go Devils! With my husband, three sons, and our daughter-in-law. Patrick McDermott, APS. A West Valley native, Patrick is active in many regional organizations and a veteran drummer with the Screaming Javelinas. Or Screaming Javelinas. <laughs> Dave Mitchell, Ideal Insurance Agency. Enjoys time with his 10 grandchildren, that is his eight and Patty's two, and appreciates a quote that his father gave him many years ago. Don't let your emotions get ahead of your better judgment. Mary Pritchard, Pritchard Insurance Group. In addition to running her small business since 1988 and being a chamber member and leader since 1989, Mary is multi-talented in that she enjoys and plays sports and music, biking and baking. And if that is not enough, Mary's ultimate to-do adventures included the Alaskan Iditarod and skydiving. Greg Rogers, Glendale Community College. I am proud to share that Greg is a past honorary commander at Luke Air Force Base and was recently introduced into the Blue Blazer Squadron, <laughs> a volunteer organization of fighter country partnership serving the needs of the men, women, and families of Luke. Ex officio member Colonel Jeremy Sloan, Luke Air Force Base. Colonel Sloan is a Seattle Seahawks fan. And, and he believes in running the football on the second and goal. <laughs> Especially at the end of a Super Bowl. He has twin 13-year-old boys, one Seahawk fan, one Patriot fan. It's obvious which one is his favorite. <laughs> Scott Spillman, BNC National Bank. He is proud that his bank is headquartered in Glendale, and his favorite book is The Twelfth Angel by Og Mandino. Scott highly recommends that we all read it, and tonight I was informed to take tissues and perhaps don't read it in public. <laughs> Thank you. A very touching book. Rob, I don't believe, is with us from Walmart. Some may describe our next board member as a bull broker by trade. What you may not know, bull riding, the mechanical variety, is one of his favorite pastime activities. This born-to-be a cowboy director has toured the Southwest from San Diego to Las Vegas, riding some of the region's most menacing mechanized stock. His personal best, an unprecedented 22nd ride, was recorded right here in Glendale at Westgate Saddle Ranch. With an ultimate goal of someday climbing onto the back of a real live Brahma, this noble guy is always up and ready to cover any local rodeo and consistently delivers a fair, honest, and factual roundup. Please welcome board member Wild Bill Toops of the Glendale Star. <laughs> Ex officio member, Glendale Mayor Jerry Wires, shares his favorite quote by Ronald Reagan. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same, or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. Also unable to join us tonight are ex officio board member Donna Lewis, Glendale Elementary School District, and Judy Walter, Chapel of the Chimes. Thank you, board members, for your work on behalf of businesses in Glendale and beyond. Don't go anywhere. We're going to get a photo. But Robert, with you at the wheel, the board is confident and excited about what's in store for 2015. Thank you for all that you do for the chamber, for businesses, and for the community. What I do every day and go into the chamber and work, um, I don't view it as work. I don't need a vacation from it. Those that have gotten to know me over the past year or so, I don't take vacation. So um, it, it, it was great to be able to surprise a few members um, because those folks that came up here um, really 
are, are, are the essence of what a chamber is. They give and they tirelessly um, help us in, in many ways, whether we're calling upon them or not. So um, we were very pleased to do that this evening and, and look forward to a few other surprises uh, coming from our chamber this year. Um, with that said, I do wanna thank Bobby and Dave uh, for their service to the Glendale Chamber. Dave, I really wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for your passion of this chamber, your leadership, your wisdom, your mentorship, and even greater, your friendship. Thank you, Dave. It has truly been an honor to work alongside of you this past year, and I've learned a lot. Thank you very much. That was perfect. So this evening, um, as we look forward to the future of Glendale, one thing is certain, the need for us to all work together collectively. We must all look forward to finding solutions together there is great economic promise in Glendale and the entire West Valley region. All of us who live and work here and do business here have a stake in this succeeding. The, Glendale's part the Glendale Chamber's partnership with our mayor, our city council, our city manager, and the city staff is vital. And we as an organization continue to be all in at finding ways to continue to strengthen the city's financial position, pursue economic development opportunities, and support job creation. This year, no doubt, will be another great year for the Chamber. As Bobby mentioned, we will continue working to refine our program of work, adding even greater value for our members and the community. And over the past year, if, as you heard Dave say, if you attended even one of our many events, you will have noticed the new energy in your Glendale Chamber of Commerce. And we hope to continue inspiring our members and community to become more involved with us on this journey. As you leave here this evening, we ask each of you to help do your part. Think innovatively, work to partner together with us as we leverage our best assets. We have many community leaders here with us tonight and those that weren't able to make it that are ready, willing, and able to roll up their sleeves to work towards a better tomorrow for our city. We are all in this together and together we must find solutions to continue to build a brighter Glendale. One thing before we close out, if you all will please stand for the retrieval of the colors. 388th Composite Squadron Color Guard Civil Air Patrol. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we want to again thank you for being here and have a wonderful evening.